If you're here and your business suddenly collapsed, tonight I'm going to pray. God will show you the unprotected forehead of your Goliath. There are those who are chased about by masquerades. And I want to announce that anytime that masquerade shows up again, the masquerade will go up in flames. Today I stand in his name and declare to you that issue that has been causing disgrace in your life and family by the word of the Lord. It is removed now. That power behind it that has been bragging that there is nothing you can do and that there is nobody who can help you. That power is captured and destroyed now. In 2018, I declare our position is changing in the name of Jesus. Our position is changing. Our position is changing. Everything that you lost as a result of those activities of the enemy that caused disgrace, that caused humiliation, receive double restoration now. Isaiah 54, verse 9 and verse 10. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as, as, as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I will not be wrought or angry with thee, nor rebuke thee. Verse 10. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. Say ye the Lord that had mercy upon thee. Praise God. No more disgrace. Touch your neighbor. Say no more disgrace. He said, he said verse 9. For this is as the waters of Noah. What happened? It makes me almighty God. To remember what happened between me and Noah. After I destroyed the earth. What happened? The Bible said that after God destroyed the earth with a flood, Noah and his family, they were panicking. It was a terrible thing. It was a traumatic experience. They were watching their friends and loved ones drowning in the water. People were climbing on top of high-rise buildings and they thought they were going to be saved. When they saw water coming to one story, they climbed to the third second two stories they climbed to the third and then they went to the roof thinking that somehow the water was top and they would climb down but alas the water kept growing until everything was swallowed people were being choked to death before their very eyes their friends their family they lost everything except the animals they brought into the ark and their and the nuclear family everything and so after God rescued them, one day, the cloud gathered as though it was going to rain again. And Noah's heart did fear. He said, again. And God said, never again. I am speaking prophetically to somebody. That traumatic experience that shook your life to the foundations, you will never experience it again. You will never experience that disaster again. You will never experience that sorrow again. God spoke to Noah. Said never again. No more. And Noah accepted it. And that day, the wind cleared. Another day, the cloud gathered again to rain. Noah began to panic. His heart was beating. Just like some people, you have lost some dear one. And then, maybe some other person is sick and your heart is beating. You are panicking. Again, just like that woman was testifying. Our daughter was vomiting and vomiting and vomiting until she died. 
her first daughter. And then the second daughter, who was just newly married, began to vomit exactly the same style, exactly the same pattern. And they were telling her of going to hospital. She knew that these people didn't understand. Somebody had sworn openly to destroy the family. She knew that this is not a hospital matter. So her heart was panting. Her heart was heavy. She didn't know what to do. And she now began to pray and say, God, tell me what to do. And God said, go to Royal Priesthood Church. And she walked into the service without anybody laying hand, without anybody praying. The child that was carried into the service, the lady, married lady that was carried into the service, she got up and began to walk around. Lift your hands and shout, thank you, Jesus. But just before that happened, the woman was panicking. He said, how can I bury two grown-up daughters in one year? Touch your neighbor, say, never again. never again. And so God decided to comfort Noah once for all. He set a rainbow in the sky. He said, Noah, anytime the cloud gathers, as though there is going to be a heavy rain, and you see this rainbow, it is I, Jehovah, the God who cannot lie, who is telling you that what you suffered before, you will never suffer it again. The Lord is speaking to somebody who cares to believe the word of God, who cares to believe his prophets, that that affliction you suffered in the year 2017, that traumatic experience in your life, that shook your life, that makes you afraid, Never again! Never again! Never again! It will never, never happen again. Lift your hand and say, never again. Hallelujah! So, no more. No more. No more. So, Noah was comforted. Any time... The rain was about to come. The cloud gathered. He wanted to panic. He will look at the sky. The rainbow will be smiling at him. Beautiful. Different colors of in all kinds of color will just be dazzling in the air. He will sigh a sigh of relief. God will give you rest. God will give you peace of mind. In the name of Jesus Christ. No more disgrace and humiliation. Look at it again. In verse 52, verse 1. Chapter 52. The same Isaiah. 52, verse 1. He said, awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. The holy city. For henceforth there shall no more. Somebody say no more. There shall no more come into thee. The uncircumcised and the unclean. Awake, awake. He said, no more. Let me give you a typical example of that kind of invasion. It, that kind of invasion. Let me give you a, a, a picture of what it looked like in 1 Samuel chapter 11. 1 Samuel 11, 1 to 3. 1 Samuel chapter 11, 1 to 3. 1 Samuel chapter 11, 1 to 3. The Nahash, the Ammonite, this one is the country of Ammon. Their king came with their soldiers. Nahash the Ammonite came up and they camped against Jabez Gilead. That is, Jabez Gilead is a, a great part of Israel. And all the men of Jabez said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us and we will serve thee. And Nahash the Ammonite answered them, On this condition will I make a covenant with you. That I may thrust out all your right eyes and lay it for a reproach upon all Israel. Verse 3. And the elders of Jabez said unto him, Give us seven days respite, that we may send messengers into all the coasts of Israel. And then if there be no man to save us, we will come out to thee. Praise God. What is that story all about? A man came with his soldiers, the king of Ammon, and invaded Israel. 
And the Israelites began to plead with him. They said, we know you are stronger. You have a stronger army. We cannot fight you. We cannot compete with you. Just allow us to serve you. Let us make a covenant that will be obedient to you. We will be paying taxes. Just like other nations do. When the, another nation conquers them, they pay taxes, they are obedient, they are loyal to that king. Allow us to do a similar thing. We are going to become your servants. That is total surrender. But the man said no. He said, on this condition am I going to make a covenant with you? That I will remove all your right eyes. Everybody in the nation. You see, the devil that came to disgrace you is not content with surrender. The power that came to humiliate you is not content with surrender. When the devil comes to humiliate a man with poverty, is not satisfied that the man cannot feel feed properly. He said, if he's not feeding properly, who knows? He can hide it with his family. Once, once they are at peace, they can eat Gary with, uh, you know, anything uh, 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 with granite, and nobody will know. I really want to disgrace them. So it makes it difficult for house rent to be paid. And landlord will stand at the gate and be shouting at the top of his voice to make sure that the person is humiliated. The, the object is not just to punish or to afflict, but to disgrace. To add disgrace on top of affliction. And today, I speak to you that God told me that that power assigned to disgrace you, that power is now destroyed. That power is now destroyed. For a lady, it may be you know, if she's not married, I mean, it's, it's, it's small. There are many people who are not married. So the enemy arranges disgraceful situations that just few days, they will arrange one kangaroo marriage. Few days to the traditional marriage, they have shared card. Maybe one week, two weeks, the whole thing will scatter. And they say, oh, when is the marriage coming up? I'm going to be there. Uh, uh, you didn't give me a shabby cloth. He said, you didn't know what happened. He said, what happened? It's a long story. And the lady will begin to cry. I have seen it. I've seen a lady came from Onisha that her own scattered twice. They fixed traditional marriage twice. They are printed card. And twice the same thing happened. Uh, one of our brethren also brought their relative from here. Twice they have fixed their a traditional marriage and twice is scattered but after praying for her for the first time a, my husband came and that marriage was done that's our, our, our brother alumna the, 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 the brother's daughter put your hands together for jesus christ for the first time the marriage was done and the lady conceived and gave back to twins twins More than five times. appointments in marriage and she came here and the power of God broke that chain in two months she was married and the declaration that was made over her head is that God will restore you double for your trouble has God done it today God will pay you double for all your troubles I say God will pay you double for all your troubles so the enemy actually came to disgrace her not because you know maybe to stop marriage after all there are many people who are not married but the enemy wanted to humiliate her twice everybody will now be coming ah, ah, we, i'm going to eat a lot of rice that day and can you imagine that the, the only way to explain it is tears is the only way to explain such a situation is tears tears 
whatever has brought tears to your eyes i have a mandate from heaven this morning to bring that affliction to an end that disgrace has come to an end in the name of jesus christ that affliction that this kind of affliction is the reason for collective captivity when you enter a family five ladies five of them are not married you enter a family four men all of them are begging we have seen things we went for family deliverance at enugu my your oh mind the house was leaking four hefty men in that family they couldn't feed themselves they couldn't repair the house not that one was waiting for the other nobody could to even eat all of them to even eat was it? one of them her sister who was married was feeding her feeding him all the men we, it was such a terrible situation that we had bags of rice we wanted to give to some people the place where we went for family delivery, we gave them rice, gave them money. Said so this one is too much. So a terrible, pitiable sight. All the men, that's this kind of affliction. He said, I will remove all your right eyes. For some people, you enter a family, it's the same sickness. Everybody, the same sickness. This person is suffering, this person is suffering, this person. But today, God is saying, No more. Jehovah says no more. In some families you enter, everyone is married and all of them are divorced. Every lady there is married and all of them are divorced. Mistress. Mistress. But I've seen God break these chains. I've seen in a, a, a family where nobody, five girls, nobody was married. It's in this church. Nobody. The only person that ever married, the devil transported him back to the house. But God broke that jinx. Praise God. Now, what do we do? What is our responsibility? What is our responsibility? What do we do to make this promise of no more disgrace to come to pass? Number one, believe God and believe his prophets. Believe God. The way I'm saying it now, Listen to me. I'm just giving you a spoon in advance. In the night, God is going to unravel a lot of things. This is one of the words that God gave to me concerning 2018. Hear it now. What disgraced you before? What disgraced you in 2017? You will disgrace that thing in 2018. Write it down. The mark of a prophet is when what he says comes to pass. Praise God. The things we told you in other years, you have seen it come to pass. Praise God. In our last convention before we came to this place, our, our team was, give me this mountain. That time we were, there was no land anywhere. That, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we are not making plans to move, to shift ground. We, we are rather thinking of buying that place. There was no place in anywhere we were planning to move to go and buy. But before we could have the next convention, that prophecy was fulfilled. God gave us this mountain. And you know in every sense, this is a mountain. Look at all the things that surround us here. I'm going to talk more about that in the night vigil. Because God set up this church as a sign. As a sign that darkness can never conquer light. This church is a sign. It's a sign. It's, Isaiah said, I and the sons that the Lord has given to me, we are for signs and for wonders. Praise God. So believe God and believe his prophets. In Isaiah 53 verse 1, he said, who has believed our report? Unto whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? If you believe the report of the Lord, his arm will be revealed to you. In Luke 1 verse 45, he said, blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things that we are told out from the Lord. Blessed is she that believed. 
That is, once you believe, there shall be a performance. Once you believe, say, once I believe, there shall be a performance. Say, once I believe, disgrace will end. Praise God. In John eleven forty five. John eleven forty, he says, "Say I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of the Lord." Number two, repent totally of treating others badly. Repent totally of treating others badly. Don't don't treat people as if they are nobody. There are people who take delight in rubbishing others, in disgracing others, in humiliating others. They make make people feel. You know, of no importance. Maybe you have come across such people. Can I see your hand? Who, when you relate, that's right. When you relate with them, they want to make you feel like a nobody. They want to show that they themselves are everything. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, do unto others as we want them to do to you. Do unto others as we want. Before you speak against somebody, think, put yourself in a person's shoe. If this kind of thing was spoken against you, are you going to be happy? Before you use somebody to make a negative illustration in the presence of others, think of how you will feel when that is said concerning you. Before you, you sit on somebody's fire in the office, think of how you will feel if somebody sits on your fire. Before you think of asking a, a, a little girl that has been sent to school to come and uh, have sex with you, before you give her one benefit or the other. Think of how you will feel when somebody does that to your child. Before you, 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 you know, walk against your neighbor, you, you, you steal from somebody. Think of how you feel when your own items, what is important to you, is stolen. Do unto others as you will have them to do unto you. Praise God. And finally, number three, rise up in anger and possess your possessions. In the place where we read, in Isaiah 52, the place where we read, he says, Awake, awake, put on thy strength. Ah, ah. Put on you, the strength is already yours. He said, Thy strength. Thy strength is already yours, it's with you already. All you just need to do is to put it on. This nonsense must stop. He said, Put on thy strength. O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments. For henceforth shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and unclean. Verse 2 says, Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down. O Jerusalem, lose thyself from the bands of thy neck. O captive daughter of Zion. He said, Do something. Take responsibility. Take action. Take violent action. And all that nonsense will stop. Praise God. I said number one, believe God and his prophets. Number two, repent totally of any way you have treated others badly. And number three, rise up in anger and possess your possessions. Yeah. And you are not born again. You are dishonoring God. The reason for which Jesus came down to die on the cross and he has been pleading with you, you think you are wise. But when the chiefs are down, anybody that is not born again will discover he has been very foolish. Because a soul that is not born again will be born in hell forever. Not for a thousand years, not for a billion years, not for a trillion years. The agony of hell is that when somebody enters, he can't come out forever. A person will be born in there. Oh Lord, have mercy, have mercy. Lord, give me another chance, another chance. That is that chance. That is that chance. The chance is before you now. Please, I want to pray with you. I beseech you. If you want to give your life to Christ, can I see your hand up? Lift that hand to the Lord. Thank you for honoring. Now, put that hand to your chest and pray this prayer with me. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I confess that you are the Son of God. You died for my sins. Forgive my sins for I'm a sinner. Jesus, please come into my heart. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. I vow to serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of my life. Thank you, Father, for saving my soul in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is uh, Mr. Paul Okechuku Enyobi. I've been worshipping here for the past 
two or three weeks, I've been having a sleepless night. The pastor knew about it, and he has prayed about it. So, yesterday I went to the chemist who has been giving me drugs. He gave me two drugs, said I should take it. I took the two drugs. I slept from, let me say, 9 o'clock till about 1 o'clock. I got up, and my eye was still wide open. Then I met a sister who was living in the next year. She gave me the communion drink. Said I should pour it on the head, drink some, and rub it on my forehead. After saying my night prayer. This is what I did. And to the glory of God, I went to bed by 1 o'clock, only to get up at 6 o'clock. <laughs> and I slept like baby. Put your hands together for Jesus. Shout hallelujah. So I slept like a baby. I didn't even I didn't even turn left or right <laughs> until morning. Disappear. So I chop money chine keke ne. Oya lu 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 anya na re keke ne na road so. Kampuni ya no bulu ke. Put your hands together for Jesus. All the hiccup, the son was having hiccup continuously, and they did everything to no avail. And then she took the communion blessed in this place and gave to the son. And the hiccup and all the sickness disappeared. Praise God. The, um, the husband's sister that was 50 something years, not married. But immediately she joined this commission. The yoke upon their family was broken and that lady was married this December. Praise God. And then her uh, son has been looking for admission and couldn't get. She has been taking exams. But by entering into this church, once they joined this commission, that yoke was broken and she has admission now. Is somebody excited? Get up from your seat and shout hallelujah! To you, I, was, uh, I just want to thank God for, it's a long story, but I just want to thank God for uh, divine healing who kept me alive today. And I want to thank God for financial favor. Praise God. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. For financial favor. Ah, Nobody is telling us how much the financial favor is. Eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah.